Hi guys, in this tutorial we're going to work our way through the clinically relevant aspects of the visual pathway. By the end you will hopefully be confident in naming the different visual field defects and identifying where in the visual pathway the associated lesion will be. Let's start by covering some important terminology. Monocular means one eye. Homonymous means affecting the same part of the visual field in each eye. Anopia means a defect in the visual field. Hemianopia means an anopia affecting half of the visual field of one eye, whilst quadrantanopia refers to an anopia affecting a quarter of the visual field of one eye. With these terms in our arsenal, let's move on to a bird's eye or transverse view of the visual pathway. Come the end of this tutorial, this diagram will hopefully not be overly imposing. Let's start with our two eyes. The back of each eye is covered by the retina, which converts the light and images we see into a signal the brain can process. Think of the retina of each eye in two halves. I'll add in a nose to help me explain. The half of the retina closest to the nose is called the nasal retina while the half of the retina in each eye furthest from the nose is called the temporal retina. We have reached our first important concept. The retina receives visual input from the opposite visual field. So if an object is in our left visual field, the left eye nasal retina and the right eye temporal retina process the image. The reverse is true if the image is in the right visual field. So if we take into account both the left and right visual fields simultaneously, it looks like this. Next, the fibres from the retina of the same half of each eye extend back and ultimately join on the same side of the brain. These fibres reach an important structure located in the thalamus called the lateral geniculate nucleus, or the LGN. The same thing happens on the opposite side. In the diagram, you can see fibres from the naso nasal retina of each eye decussate or cross to the other side of the brain. This area is called the optic chiasm. We have come to our first visual field defect example. If there was a lesion affecting the optic chiasm, what visual field defect would you expect? A bitemporal hemianopia. Bitemporal meaning a loss of vision in the temporal visual field of each eye. Before the optic chiasm, the fibres from each eye spend a period of time together in a structure called the optic nerve, which is the second cranial nerve. If there was a lesion of the left optic nerve, what visual field defect would you expect? A left monoocular visual loss. In other words, a left monoocular anopia. The second important concept of the visual pathway is after the chiasm, a lesion of the visual pathway will cause a visual field defect on the opposite side. So a lesion affecting the left visual pathway will cause a right visual field defect, whilst a lesion affecting the superior fibres of the visual pathway will result in an inferior visual field defect. The next structure to identify is that which extends from the optic chiasm to the LGN on each side. This is called the optic tract. What visual field defect would you expect with a lesion affecting the right optic tract? A left homonymous hemianopia. It is left because of the opposite concept just mentioned. Homonymous because the same side of each eye experiences a visual field defect. And hemianopia because only half of each eye's retinal fibres will be affected. 
From the LGN and the thalamus, the visual pathway continues to the visual cortex and the occipital lobe. The purple lines represent Meyer's loop, which carry information from the inferior retina of the same side of each eye. The light blue lines represent Balm's loop, which carry information from the superior retina of the same side of each eye. To help illustrate this point, this is the side-on or sagittal view of the visual pathway. So you can see fibres from the inferior retina carrying information from the superior visual field extend back to the visual cortex via the LGN and Myers loop. Therefore, if there was a lesion affecting Myers loop in the left temporal lobe, what visual field defect would you expect? A right superior quadrantinopia. It is right and superior because of the opposite concept and a quadrantinopia because only the fibres which carry information from the inferior retina are evolved. So what visual field defect would you expect if there was a lesion affecting Balm's loop in the left parietal lobe? A right inferior quadrantinopia. Together, the fibres of the visual pathway extending from the LGN to the visual cortex are called the optic radiation. If there was a lesion which affects the optic radiation on the right side, what visual field defect would you expect? A left homonymous hemianopia. Yes, the same visual field defect you would expect from a lesion affecting the right optic tract. Now, if there is a lesion affecting the visual cortex on the right side, what visual field defect would you expect? A left homonymous hemianopia with macular sparing. From the diagram on screen and all we have talked about so far, we can understand why we get a left homonymous hemianopia. But why is there macular sparing? This is because the macular area of the visual cortex is supplied by both the posterior cerebral artery and the middle cerebral artery. This means if there is an occlusion of the posterior cerebral artery, the middle cerebral artery will provide collateral flow to the macular area of the cortex on that side, which prevents macular visual loss. We have two last visual field defects to discuss which require the return to the sagittal view. If there is a lesion affecting the superior aspect of the optic chiasm, what visual field defect would you expect? A bitemporal inferior quadrantinopia. What about a lesion affecting the inferior aspect of the optic chiasm? A bitemporal superior quadrantinopia. Great! So we have covered the clinically relevant parts of the visual pathway and a multitude of visual field defects. To help consolidate this knowledge, this tutorial will finish by presenting on screen six different visual field defects. The aim is to first describe the visual field defect and then identify where in the pathway the lesion will be. You will have 10 seconds for each. For me, however, this is goodbye. Thanks for watching.